What is happening, everyone? Welcome back to G-Ball Vision. Thank you for stopping in today. I got a little discussion for you guys. Before we get started, double check and make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I would love to have you here. And before you head out, do me a huge favor. Hit the thumbs up button. Greatly appreciate everyone. Really helps get the videos pushed out there to more people. And feel free to let me know what you are carrying in your pockets today down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. So the discussion topic today is going to be are these two knives and any variation of these knives still the best reigning champion, the best value on the market today in 2024? And the simple and short answer is yes, but don't leave just yet. We have a couple of things to touch on and actually determine are these still the best value when it comes to a USA made knife and why? are they the best value now if we were to bring in foreign made knives we might have a little bit different discussion we would definitely have some other knives here on the table but we're not going to include foreign made knives right now at this point we are talking specifically usa made knives now when it has come to the best value i'm not the only one who says this i'm not you know not the only one by a mile. There are many people who fall into, you know, the same assumptions that I do that these two knives right here are the best value on the market. We are talking about the Hogue Deca in either form. And we are talking about the Hogue and Doug Ritter collaboration, the RSK. We're going to just keep it RSK for simplification of the video. Now, this one is the original coming in 20 CV. They also made a mini in 20 CV, and now they are making a mini and a full size in Magna Cut, which I do plan on getting. They also make a Hogue Deca in 20 CV, and they make a Hogue Deca in Magna Cut, which is now the version two. You can find a Hogue Deca version one in 20 CV USA made a lot of times for like 130. You can get a Magna Cut Deca a lot of times for not much more than that, maybe 140, 150, depending on the type of scales that you get. Now, back when I got this from an SMKW exclusive run, uh, this is a V2 SMKW exclusive and Magna Cut with the golden black carbon fiber scales. This was a little bit more, but not by much uh, than the standard Magna Cut version that's around now. The, the RSK here in 20 CV could routinely be had for between 140 and 160 for the 20 CV variants. And now in Magna Cut, they, I think, top out uh, in the G10 variations is like 170, maybe 180. Uh, if you're getting like a G Mascus, they might go up a little bit more if you get a carbon fiber variant. But, you know, to keep things simple, let's just say 150 for the DECA and let's just say 170 for the RSK. Now, the next bump up is going to be something from American Blade Works, which is going to be roughly about $220 or so. So we're talking about a $50 difference, which isn't, you know, crazy, but then if we start increment incrementing everything like that, you know, before you know it, you find yourself at five, six hundred dollars. So for the sake of the video, we're going to keep everything under 200 bucks when we're talking about the best value because there's a certain point at which you get to where it's diminishing return. You know what I mean? After a certain point, you are just in love with the design. You are in love with the company. Uh, you are in love with something other than getting the best bang for your money, right? You're not going to go out and get a hinderer, you know, USA made hinderer, USA made Demco, USA made Medford, uh, because that's the best bang for your money, right? There's other reasons involved with buying one of those knives. Now, people who are looking for the best bang, the best value are more often than not, if we're talking about USA made knives, are going to fall right here 
into one of these two categories whether you want you know this is a full size deca which is still a good size even if you have xl sized hands you're going to get a nice purchase on this guy and they do come with a clip point or a worn cliff style blade they are both going to feature the able lock which is hoag's crossbar lock done very very well and in the case of this guy here they have the mini and the full size which this is going to be a little bit more substantial than the deca a little bit bigger contoured handles a little bit just a little bit bigger overall right a little bit taller blade taller handle thicker all that sort of thing so it's going to kind of depend on where you fall on the size that you prefer I prefer both, uh, and that's why I have both. And I think these remain, after a couple years now, the top dog when it comes to the value. There's, in my opinion, the next closest thing is going to be something from TRM or American Blade Works right around that $300 price point. You're going to be getting Magnet Cut, you're going to be getting Titanium or 20 CV and titanium at that $300 price point. Now, at that point, I can say, if you cannot stand G10 or maybe carbon fiber, you must have titanium, then I could say and see $300 as being that point of diminishing return because you have to decide, is it really worth it? You know, if you're buying one knife, you know, me, I'm kind of out of this topic. Uh, it, it, it's irrelevant to me. It's going to be irrelevant to a lot of my viewers. But there are people out there who are looking for those one or two knives that they can go out and get and last them, you know, a potential lifetime. You have to decide, do you want to spend another hundred, hundred and fifty dollars uh, for titanium handles? That's basically what it's going to boil down to because you can get the same damn steel uh, basically heat treated at the same level. Now, <clears throat> American Blade Works, TRM may have a little bit better heat treat on their Magna Cut. The 20CV is going to be the same. I believe Hogue is running 61 to 3 on their Magna Cut. Uh, ABW is going to hit 63 to 4 and TRM I forget what they are doing 61 to 3 or 62 to 4 somewhere in that ballpark so you might be getting a little bit better heat treat on this the knife itself the steel itself but you have to decide is that hundred and fifty dollars or so worth it for that little bit better heat treatment and those titanium scales. Now to some people they'll say for sure it is worth it. But I think for the majority and you know, it's not like 61 to 3 is a suboptimal heat treat like it's like it's not any good at 61 to 3. The average person is never going to know the difference between 61 and 3 and 64 you know, two to four. You're just, they're not. So don't kid yourself if you say you will, you will not. Uh, now, if it starts to drop below that 61 or two, then possibly. Uh, but in that range, these are my opinions, of course, in that range, I don't think it's going to be noticeable to 85% of people. There might be a few people out there in the world that could tell the difference between 61 and 3 and 62 and 4. I, I just don't see it. Um, I know I wouldn't. Honestly, if somebody said this is 62 to 4 and it was 61 to 3, I would not know that. You know, uh, I just wouldn't. Even using them and all that sort of thing, all my knives get used and they get used routinely on a daily basis. And I still would not be able to decipher that this is not 62 to 4. So, bringing everything back around, is that little bit of heat treat and that titanium worth it to you to spend? $170 more, 100 and 
$30 more, maybe $100 more if you get carbon fiber and magna cut with the RSK. Uh, and even if the DECA and magna cut, let's just say you spend $150 and get carbon fiber and magna cut, you're still another $150 away from the next USA made knife. So is it ultimately worth it to do that? I don't think so, as if we're talking about value, right? Because carbon fiber is a great material. It's very strong, very durable, looks very good, and it's very lightweight. G10 is also a very durable material. It's not a very heavy material, and you know, with the right build quality, uh, it's going to be very durable and strong as well. There's not going to be, you know, especially with a couple of standoffs, this is not going to flex. You are not going to have any issues with either of these two knives. Now, the value is going to lie in what you believe is, you know, closest to your heart. If you're looking for the cheapest, best USA made knife on the market, there's no question that the Hogue Deca is going to take the cake. Now, whether you get it in 20 CV or Magna Cut, eh, the Magna Cut is definitely going to be a little, you know, tougher than 20 CV. Going to have great edge retention on both, going to be very corrosion resistant on both. Magna Cut, probably all around, is a better steel, <clears throat> but 20 CV has been around a while, properly heat treated, it's going to get the job done and it's going to do it very, very well. Uh, Magna Cut, you know, probably the next step above 20 CV, get a little added bonus and bonuses in there with it. But you could potentially go get a 20 CV DECA for like a buck 30. Uh, in, in, in FRN, yeah, uh, but you can always get different scales for it down the line, uh, or you could leave it go. FRN's not the, the best material in the world, but Hogue does a good job with it. Um, so you could leave the FRN and be just fine, and that knife will still last you uh, forever. Uh, but you could always bump up to something else, no question. Uh, and you could do the same with either one of these. You could get aftermarket scales, get the cheapest one you can find, and then spend a little bit extra money on the scales. So say you get this knife at 150, 160. You could go out and spend a hundred bucks on titanium handles and still be, you know, 40 to $60 under the next best thing. So you have to kind of play those games with everything. Uh, with the DECA, you could get the cheap FRN one and spend even a hundred bucks and you'd only be at like 230. And there's nothing saying you have to go out and get those aftermarket scales immediately. Uh, you could always try out the knife, see if you would just keep it the way it is. If you ultimately decide, you know, you like a different aesthetic, maybe you want a little bit more heft to it, then you could always go to and get some, you know, titanium scales from a plethora of different companies. Ultimately, guys, the simple answer is yes, the DECA V1 and V2, the RSK <clears throat> V1 and V2, mini or full size are going to be and still are and i don't think anything is going to take the place of these two knives anytime soon uh there's just no way around it the next you know company that does something similar to these two knives is going to be benchmade and you're talking 300 minimum for a bug out in S90V and carbon fiber. Now, do I love S90V? Yes, but I also love Magna Cut. So tell me, would you rather spend 300 on or more on a bug out in the same materials or same similar materials, or would you rather pay 150 <laughs> for the DECA? I mean, it's very clear. Uh, we could also bring out something that's very similar to the RSK. I do have a Griptilian in S30, which is going to be close to the same price as this, 
S30 and FRN, uh, 20 CV and G10. So, you know, the Doug Ritter is a fa you know far and above that Griptilian. The Super Freak here, an M4, G10, very similar size and build. Uh, this knife is going to be, I forget what they are now, uh, but they used to be about 270, 280. So I can only bet they're 300 now, uh, maybe even more. Even if they're not, you're still $100, you know, below the Super Freak uh, with the RSK. So the next best USA made thing that is identical to these two knives is far above the cost of these two knives. It's just insane to me that Benchmade can get away with what they do and Hogue still is continuing even now with new models in Magna Cut right now just coming out still keeping the price down at 160 170 and that is a lot of money uh you know but keeping everything in perspective it is not much money when you know a hinder a demco a medford insert strider you insert the company usa made crk those knives are going to be 500 plus all day every day no matter what so you know, you're not left with a whole lot of options. And that's where I hope a few select companies really start turning the corner. Kershaw, Schrade, you know, ZT, you know, wherever they are. A couple other companies. I, I really hope they turn the corner and can give everyone more options in a very good price point and maintain those solid types of builds. Uh, I think Schrade is the closest. Their prices are a little high, but they are USA made on those higher end alpha knives. Uh, I'd love to see them kind of revamp and, and keep continue with what they have uh, and continue building off of it because we would have more USA made knives falling in between these two groups right here. It would be great. Uh, so I hope that happens at some point. You guys will have to let me know down in the comments. Do you still find the DECA and the RSK the best value on the market? Or do you think there's something else? Do you disagree and think, you know, the step up to that $300 price point overshadows these knives in their given price point? Let me know what you think down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Always appreciate that, guys. If you're new here, we release videos just like this one every single day. Hit that subscribe button. Ring the little bell. I would love to have you here. Otherwise, guys, I'll throw up a couple of new videos. Go check one of them out. Have yourself an awesome day. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.